Hello everyone, my name is Paula Camperman and I'm the Outreach Program Manager of the Bennington County Solid Waste Alliance. I'll be talking to you today about managing a successful food scrap diversion program involving condo complexes and homeowner associations while adhering to guidelines of the Vermont's recycling law. My co-host today, normally Michael Batcher, is not joining us, but I will be able to answer all the questions at the end of the presentation. So feel free to put your questions in the chat by hitting the chat button or the Q&A at the bottom of your screen. All the materials and websites mentioned will be included along with a recording of this webinar in a follow-up email you'll receive tomorrow. So let's get started. Many of you are hearing about the Alliance for the first time today, so I'll give you a little background. The Alliance was formed in 2015 to assist participating towns in reducing solid waste disposed in landfills by reducing the amount of waste generated conserve resources and promote recycling and reuse. The Alliance provides education and outreach to businesses, schools, residences to help achieve the Alliance's goals to reduce the amount of material people put in our service area into landfills and increase the amount of materials diverted from landfills for recycling and reuse. The Alliance is made up of 13 towns, Arlington, Bennington, Dorset, Glastonbury, Manchester, Pownall, Rupert, Sandgate, Searsburg, Shaftesbury, Stamford, Sunderland, and Woodford. The towns of Peru, Reedsboro, Londonderry, Landgrove, and Winhall, while in Bennington County, are not members of the Alliance. All of the businesses that we serve, we provide solid waste audits where we visit your business and review waste management practices and offer technical assistance in managing your solid waste. This could include a review of current recycling laws, provide sources to recycled items banned from the landfill, provide communication pieces and signing for your staff about recycling, and suggest ways to possibly lower your solid waste hauling costs. We host household hazardous waste collection events during warmer summer months. This service is also available to small businesses if you pre-register with us, which can cost less than a dedicated pickup by hazardous waste collection companies coming to your location. We provide source information for the disposal of banned items such as computers and electronics, fluorescent bulbs, and paint through special recycling programs. Most of this information is available on our website. We also provide community outreach through presentations to groups and the public about recycling composting, and waste reduction. A good example of this is making a presentation to residents of an apartment or condominium complex about food scrap diversion and proper recycling. Nearly half of all the waste produced globally is either organic or biodegradable. When sent to a landfill and allowed to degrade anaerobically, that's without the presence of oxygen, methane is produced, which is 30 times more powerful than carbon dioxide at trapping heat. The increases in greenhouse gas emissions is responsible for our climate change. So when we reduce the amount of waste we generate, we reduce our need for additional landfill space while reducing our carbon footprint. Vermont Universal Recycling adopt a Law adopted a food recovery hierarchy into law in 2012 to draw attention to our use of uneaten food and help guide consumers into making the highest and best use of their food. The most preferred method being source reduction, followed by food for people, then animals, then composting. When we reduce our consumption of food and thereby reducing the amount of food scraps generated in the first place by shopping smarter, strategically planning meals with the foods we have on hand, less of our food goes to waste. When we do have leftover food, our first priority is to give it to people first through food pantries and other organizations. When we have lower quality food waste, we share that with animals and other agricultural uses. Any leftover food at this point should be composted or used in anaerobic digestion. In 2014, Vermont began requiring large food scrap generators like grocery stores, universities and large hospitals to divert their food scraps from landfills to certified facilities. As of July 1st, 2020, Smaller generators, including residents, are now required to divert their food scraps. 
This requires all residents to adjust the ways in which food is disposed of and as condo owners implement a program for food scrap diversion that meets the needs of all its residents while still complying with state laws. I'll spend the next few minutes outlining those details and requirements. As we know, as of July 1st, 2020, food scraps cannot go in the trash in Vermont, including condos. Condos and HOAs are not required to hire or provide a food scrap management service for its residents, but they must keep food scraps separate from trash. The first step is to assure that arrangements have been made for the removal of food scraps from all units, which can be done in a variety of ways. As you decide on which method of collection and disposal to use, consider that some residents don't drive or there may be insufficient space to manage scraps on site. Residents and associations have three options. First, they may hire a company to pick up the food scraps. While haulers are not required by law to pick up food scraps from condo owners individually, they may offer food scrap collection as part of the trash and recycling service already provided in a central location. Especially in a multi-unit setting, it may make sense to manage trash, recycling, and food scraps together collectively for the hauler to pick up. Residents also have the option to collect food scraps individually or collectively for a drop-off at a transfer station, farm, or community compost facility. The third option, to digest or compost in backyard or common green space, can be an easy diversion method if space is available and someone is willing to actively manage the bin or bins. When properly managed, composting produces a rich soil amendment containing vital nutrients that can be added to house plants, gardens, and lawns, while reducing soil erosion and protecting against drought, as it holds 20 times its weight in water. Backyard composting is a relatively inexpensive option with residences, residents or the HOA purchasing or building the bin to collect scraps. Using a solar digester for those unfamiliar with the process is a way for residents to place food scraps, including meat, bones, and pet waste into a container partially submerged underground that may only need to be emptied every few years. When commercial haulers provide food scrap collection, they typically provide containers, either rolling carts similar to trash and recycling carts to store outside or within a shed or garage. When condo owners are coordinating individual pickups from residential units for a drop-off at either central location, locating, located collection point on site, or a transfer station, two to five gallon buckets with lids work well for each unit's food scraps. Now that I've explained the various options there are to food scrap diversion, I'm going to describe the ways to get your chosen food scrap collection system started. If you already are using a hauler to pick up your trash and recycling, check to see if they offer food scrap collection. If your decision to use this method is financially motivated, check to see if your costs will be higher with the added service. If an HOA has multiple units or generate a high volume of waste, you may be able to negotiate a more favorable fee structure with your hauler by adjusting the size of trash collection containers or pickup schedule. It also may be worth conducting a cost comparison among different haulers. You may find expanding your current collection with your hauler to include food scraps is the easiest to implement for residents with the convenience outweighing any increase in hauling costs. When using a hauler, keep in mind managing odors and pets, pests around food scraps prior to pickup require adding carbons or browns as they're referred to, such as sawdust, mulch, wood shavings, leaves, shredded newspaper, coffee grounds, and other organic material on top of the food scraps stored in a tote or bin. Commercial haulers may provide an additional tote containing wood pulp or sawdust, which landlords and tenants and residents use to apply on top of food scraps. So you'll need to make sure your collection location has enough space for the additional bins. The amount of sawdust or other browns added on top of food scraps will vary with the temperature and how full your bin is. 
In summer months, you may need to add two to six inches of the browns, particularly to full bins to keep maggots and flies at bay, and much less during winter months when there are fewer pests. Packing the sawdust down with a handheld garden tool will help control pests and maximize space in the bin between pickups. It is important for either a property manager or any resident involved in adding scraps to the bins understand this process to keep it running well. If you are dropping off food scraps at a transfer station, make sure residents or staff are aware of the hours and any fees charged. Most haulers and drop-off locations accept all food scraps, including meat and bones, fats, oils, coffee grounds, and filters and spoiled food. It is important that residents understand that what goes into bins or collection buckets is just organic matter. No produce sticky labels, wrappings, or plastic bags used to line the kitchen compost bin and then used to transport scraps from the kitchen and deposited into the common area collection bin. Plastic bags do not break down during the composting process and must be sorted out. Most haulers only accept bags that are labeled BPI, certified, and compostable, but check with the hauler before implementing them in your program. On a note, side note, compostable bags should be used as a bucket liner and can be very expensive, particularly over the long period of time, and their quality can vary widely. A less expensive method may be to line a small bucket with newspaper and wash out the bucket once emptied into the larger collection tote. Hardware stores and online bulk wholesalers sell buckets with lids. Some restaurants, bakeries, grocery stores, and food manufacturers end up with extra buckets on hand that they give away for free. You can also check websites like FreeCycle or networks like Front Porch Forum, where they are sometimes advertised. If the property has just a few residential units, Composting food scraps in the backyard can be an easy solution if a resident or property manager is willing to actively manage the piles throughout the year. Compost bins can be made of a variety of materials. The plastic compost bins purchased at hardware stores or through our alliance during warmer weather months at scheduled sales can be an economical and easy way to get started. Residents composting in the backyard should be reminded that leftover meat and bones should still be placed in the trash rather than the compost bins as their composting system won't reach a temperature high enough to properly break down the animal material and can attract unwanted animals. The key to managing a successful compost system is understanding the techniques for proper breakdown to keep animals away and maintain healthy sanitary conditions on your property. University of Vermont's Extension has a master composting course online, and the state of Vermont has resources as well for successful composting. Solar digesters are also a good solution if you don't have use for the finished compost and just want to break down the food scraps. A solar digester will break down all food scraps, including meat, bones, and animal waste. While a lot more expensive upfront, it requires less looking after once the system is set up than a composting system. In either case, it is important that you size your system to be sufficient to serve the number of units you have on the property. Vermont has seen an increase in human bear interactions, so it's important to take a few, few steps to discourage bears and to manage your compost so it doesn't attract animals. Take down bird feeders during non-winter months. Use three times as many browns as greens to minimize smell and to speed up the composting process and regularly return your compost pile so the materials break down more quickly. If bear activity persists, check with your neighbors to see if they have bird feeders up or other food sources that are attracting animals. More information about composting and resources to address animal issues can be found in a booklet entitled The Dirt on Compost, which is distributed by the Vermont Department of Environmental Conservation. For any food scrap diversion program to be successful, communication and understanding of the process is key. It's important to help residents understand what food scraps are and how they will be collected in their dwelling and brought to the central location or backyard system. 
Will receptacles such as a bucket with lid to collect the food scraps in their kitchen to a later to be taken out to the collection bin outside? Make sure residents are aware of the collection schedule if they are at all involved in taking collection bins or buckets to the curbside or central location to be picked up by a hauler. They need to know what is and is not allowed in the collection tote or compost bin or solar digester. The state of Vermont has downloadable bin signs you can use and laminate and post above bins identifying proper sorting of food scraps, recycling and trash, as well as instructions for setting up a composting system. Your hauler may also provide you signs that are easy to use for sorting items. Larger facilities have noted success when using a resident living within the complex to act as a guide and influencer, if you will, to instruct other fellow residents on proper sorting and keep upkeep of the waste sorting area. If residents are contaminating the bins by putting items in the wrong place, you can send them reminders about proper sorting within the system. It is important to put this whole process in perspective. When residents understand that most of what they are throwing away isn't really trash, but a marketable commodity with a monetary value on items such as paper, aluminum, cardboard, glass, tin, plastic, and now food scraps, their behavior about sorting items and making sure items are clean and dry and uncontaminated may change. You'll notice that your efforts of educating them are paying off when the bins are looking cleaner and smell less and they've done their part to reduce their carbon footprint. <laughs> now, if they aren't really thinking about that, then they're at least likely to notice that it doesn't smell as much. The Alliance is available to host on-site or virtual presentations about recycling and composting to help residents better understand the process. So your waste management program is a success. We can also perform a waste audit at your location to address your needs about special recycling or other waste management concerns you may have. So to recap, condo owners and HOAs have a variety of options to arrange for the removal of food scraps from rentals. The HOA can subscribe to a pickup service where available for members such as a hauler or ensure members bring food scraps to a drop off farm transfer station or composting community community composting facility. They can set up a backyard compost system or solar digester. Vermont law requires haulers to collect food scraps from commercial accounts and residential addresses of four or more units, but haulers may offer the service to addresses with fewer than four units. Most food haulers accept all food scraps, including meat, bones, fats, oils, coffee grounds, and filters, as well as spoiled food. All scraps picked up by haulers or composted on site must be free of labels and bags. The exception is if a hauler permits bags that are BPI certified compostable bags. Condos and HOAs should allow enough space for additional bins required to collect food scraps and store sawdust browns to put on top of the food scraps as well as supply adequate signing and information about the waste management program in place. Residents composting on site may discard their meat and bones in the trash since composting bins do not reach temperatures high enough to ensure proper breakdown and to avoid attracting animals and pests. Residents using solar digesters may also add meat, bones, and animal waste to their systems. Proper education to residents and signing will go a long way to a successful waste management system. Condo owners and HOAs should partner with a resident influencer to help educate and communicate to others about correct sorting when there is contamination to ensure highest and best use of recycled materials. As an added point, not previously mentioned, we encourage larger properties especially to consider offering the separating of banned items from the trash, such as electronics or e-waste, be held aside separately and brought to the transfer station. It doesn't take a lot of time or space, but spares precious elements that can be recycled and potentially combustible components, such as lithium batteries, from being landfilled and known to start fires. These items can be taken to the transfer station and recycled in a safe manner. In addition, 
Architectural paint, still in liquid form that may be collecting on site, can be dropped off for recycling at several area retailers in quantities of up to five gallons a day in their original container. Any paint that has hardened should be disposed of in the trash. And finally, we'd like to remind folks that household hazardous waste, that includes things like chemicals, pesticides, paints, and mercury-containing items such as fluorescent bulbs, thermostats, thermometers, and alkaline and rechargeable batteries, can be dropped off during our household hazardous waste collection events held during warmer months of the year. Follow us on Facebook or see our ads in the Vermont News Guide for scheduled dates and locations. Thank you for taking the time to view this presentation. I will now answer your questions.